The Sun has many characteristics that are precisely fine-tuned to support life on Earth. But according to many evolutionists, this is nothing to make a fuss over. Many insist that our Sun is nothing special. The famous astronomer Carl Sagan once said, Where are we? Who are we? We find that we live on an insignificant planet of a humdrum star lost in a galaxy tucked away in some forgotten corner of a universe in which there are far more galaxies than people. Other astronomers make similar statements. Our star, the Sun, is rather ordinary. In many respects, then, the Sun is a very run-of-the-mill entity. The Sun is a rather ordinary star, not unusually hot or cold, old or young, large or small. It is fortunate that we have such a garden variety star so near at hand. Is our Sun really ordinary? Not at all. Our Sun is very unusual. It's brighter than about 85% of all stars, and it has more mass than about 90%. In fact, we should be very thankful that our Sun is not an average star. Here's why. About 75% of all stars are red dwarfs. These emit less than 5% of the light output of our Sun. If the Earth revolved around one of these, our planet would be extremely hostile to life. To be warm enough, the Earth would have to orbit extremely close to the star. This would create a tidal lock, where the same side of the Earth would always face the star. Photosynthesis would be impossible on the Earth's night side, and possibly the day side as well, because of the reddish light. So there would be no plant life, no food, and no oxygen for us. Even worse than this, red dwarfs are unstable, and they flare frequently. This would sterilize the Earth if we were unlucky enough to closely orbit such a star. So that's 75% of all stars that are unsuitable for us. Of the remaining 25%, many of them are also unsuitable. They're too unstable, or they emit too much radiation for life to be possible nearby. Even among massive stars, the Sun is unusual. And even among Class G stars like our Sun, more than half of them are in binary or multiple systems. But these systems make it much more difficult for there to be a stable climate on any planet that revolves around them. Many of them wouldn't be able to keep any planets in stable orbits. The more we examine the universe, the more unusual our Sun appears. For years, astronomers have been looking for solar twins, stars with characteristics like our Sun. Despite examining thousands of stars, astronomers have discovered only a handful of candidates for twins, and even these few candidates still have significant differences from our Sun. So we see that the Sun is not average at all. It's very special. As one astronomer has noted, some of the popular perception of the Sun is downright wrong. Writers sometimes tell us that it is just an average star. Not so. The vast majority of stars are smaller, cooler, dimmer, and less massive than the Sun. Another said, People say the Sun is a typical star. That's not true. Almost all environments in the universe are terrible for life. It's only Garden of Eden places like Earth where it can exist. There's one more aspect to the Sun that we need to discuss. The Sun is amazingly stable, much more so than we might expect if we didn't accept the Bible as true history. This is a solar flare, an eruption on the surface of the Sun. These look impressive, but usually their only effect on the Earth is to produce beautiful displays of northern lights. Flares occur on other stars as well, but they're far more dangerous than the ones our Sun produces. For example, I mentioned earlier that red dwarfs are about 75% of all stars. These erupt so frequently and so violently that they're sometimes called flare stars. If the Earth had a close orbit around one of those, our planet would be fried in a very short time. Here's an example. Recently a red dwarf star called E.V. Lassertae unleashed a ferocious blast. This little star shines with only about 1% of the Sun's light but the mega flare it produced was thousands of times bigger than the flares produced by our sun. If our sun ever did something like this to us, it would rip away the Earth's atmosphere and kill all life on our planet. Another example of an unstable star is V838 Mon. This unusual star is not only detonating a series of eruptions, it's also bloating outwards in size. Now it's roughly the size of the orbit of Jupiter. If there were ever any planets in close orbit, They've now been consumed by this star. Then there's Eta Carina. Scientists have watched this star system erupt in a series of blasts going back to the early 1800s. 
Not all stars are this extreme, but scientists have learned that even stars they used to think were safe, even solar type stars like our Sun, are still dangerous to any planet that might orbit them. We've discovered that even stars very similar to our Sun tend to have super flares, huge eruptions with up to 10 million times more energy than our Sun's flares. These happen about once per century for Sun type stars. If our Sun were an average star, it too would produce frequent super flares and the Earth would be devastated. But in all of history, there's no evidence that the Sun has ever erupted into super flare. As one article noted, Sun-like stars normally produce a bright superflare about once a century. Why a superflare has not occurred on the Sun in recorded history is unclear. The consensus is emerging that our Sun is extraordinarily stable. So while other stars explode frequently in massive eruptions, our Sun is quiet and calm. One 30-year study of the Sun found that its energy output varied by less than one-tenth of one percent. Despite what some people say, the Sun is not an average mediocre star. It's very unusual, and we should be very thankful for this. The Sun does not look like the outcome of random processes. It is unique, quiet and stable, and exceptionally well designed to sustain us. But this shouldn't surprise us, because the Bible tells us that God created the Earth for us to live here. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the Earth and made it. He hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else.